I was caught between two worlds, rich and poor, past and future, and it was time to make the hardest decision of my life. Hi everyone, I'm Kate from Taiwan. Please like and subscribe if you've ever had to make an impossible choice. Before we get back to that, here's a little backstory. When I was a kid, I idolized my mom. She was a total boss. She owned her own real estate company, wore the best clothes, could body slam a guy twice her size, fold her legs over her head, and was the coolest person in the world. I wanted to be just like her. Don't worry, I eventually stopped being her mini-me. But come on, I was cute. When I was nine, I was turning cartwheels in the attic, and I accidentally kicked over a shelf and a jar of old buttons and yarn fell on the floor. I knelt down to pick it up, and I saw something amazing. I sat there for hours, moving the buttons and yarn around until it became a work of art. After that, I was hooked. I gathered random objects from everywhere to make my masterpieces. My mom encouraged me to follow my passion, but my dad didn't get me at all. Get out of the trash can! I almost got it! Dad was barely ever home, and when he was, he never had time to talk to me. I didn't mind, though, because my mom and I were close, and she was all I needed. But then one day, completely out of the blue, Mom packed her bags and left. I'm sorry, sweetie. I hope someday you'll understand. She didn't explain or say when she was coming back, and of course, my dad wasn't any help. He shut himself in his room, hugging their old wedding photos and crying his eyes out while he sang old love songs off-key. For a little while, I felt totally lost and confused, and then one day at school, I met April. You made this? So cool! Thanks! Found object art is my favorite! I was shocked. My art projects had a name. For so long, I thought I was just a weirdo. After that, things started looking up. April introduced me to her friends. They were all really nice and talented and cool. They didn't care what anybody thought of them, especially the spoiled rich kids from the private school across town. Freak! Snob! We clicked right away. It felt like I'd known them all my life. As the years passed, we spent all our time hunting down random items and transforming them into something new and beautiful. I still missed my mom, but hanging out with April and my friends made me feel much better. But of course, my stupid dad had to ruin it. I've decided to enroll you in a private high school across town. It's the best education money can buy. I was devastated. Dad, no, I like my school. All my friends go there. You'll make new friends. This is all for the best. You'll see. My blood boiled. I couldn't believe this. My dad really sucked, but this time, he'd gone too far. You sit on a throne of lies. You're the worst. Mom would never do this. Well, your mom's not here. Then dad just stormed off. I begged and pleaded for him to change his mind, but he didn't budge. My life was over. I was going to be behind enemy lines in a private school filled with rich, judgmental, spoiled, dim-witted, money-obsessed snobs. April and my friends encouraged me to stay positive, so I tried to be optimistic. But when I got there, I discovered kids there were jerks. They even bullied their own teacher. Please don't tell me you actually paid for that outfit. Things were much worse than I ever imagined. Can you, like, not afford a tailor? What happened to custom-made outfits? It didn't help that as soon as April and the others saw me in my school uniform, they were compelled to make fun of me. Oh, please, your excellence, allow me. Your royal hand shouldn't have to touch this filth. Can I get you some tea, your majesty? You guys are jerks. You know I didn't have a choice, right? At school, I tried to keep my head down and blend in with the others, but one time, I spotted a cool ribbon in the trash that I could use for my new art piece. I dug it out of the trash can, and someone spotted me. Ew, look, she's digging through the trash like a raccoon. Oh, gross! I was so embarrassed. After that, everyone started to call me Raccoon Girl. It hurt my feelings for a while, but I eventually learned to ignore it. I even tried to be more discreet when I gathered items for my art projects. Those rich kids threw away the best stuff. A couple weeks later, a new boy named Lee joined the school. Word was that his parents were CEOs or something important, and all the students treated him like royalty, and he acted like one too. But there was this one time when a snobby rich girl threw trash on the ground, and Lee went to go pick it up. And then he brought it over to me. Hey, Kate, I know we've never talked before, but you're into, like, found art projects, right? I thought maybe you could use this. That's uh, covered in pizza sauce. <sighs> Sorry, that was dumb, huh? It was really sweet, though. Thank you. I think it's really cool how you're able to turn anything you find into art, and I was wondering if you could maybe teach me. 
There's nothing to learn, but sure, I'll teach you. At first, I thought Lee was just being nice, but all throughout the week, he kept bringing me things, none of which I could use, and I started to wonder if he liked me. Since he was always acting shy, I decided to ask him myself. Do you like me or something? Why are you being so overly nice? What's the deal? What? No. Gosh, where would you get an idea like that? <laughs> okay, yeah, I like you a lot. Would you maybe want to go out with me sometime, like on a date? I'd love to. That weekend, Lee planned the world's most expensive date for us, dinner at a super exclusive restaurant, dessert on his dad's yacht, and then a stroll through a private garden I didn't even know existed. I'm having a lot of fun, but you didn't have to do all this. I'm not that type of girl. I'm happy just having a conversation. <sighs> Sorry, I might have gotten a little carried away. I just really wanted to impress you, so you'd say yes to, to going on a second date with me? Oh, yeah, um, sure. I guess I could fit that into my schedule. I never expected to fall for one of the rich kids, but Lee wasn't like the others. He treated everyone the same, no matter how much money they had. And he had a little sister he adored, and he loved model airplanes, which was dorky but kinda cute. Before I knew it, it was our one month anniversary, and Lee and I got together to exchange gifts. You go first. Okay, so I got you this Ferrari. What? And this diamond necklace, and the keys to your own beach house. Now you go. I, uh, I made you a little airplane out of seashells. It's okay, you can say you're disappointed. It's the nicest thing anyone's ever given me. It reminded me of the time I made my mom a macaroni picture frame when I was little. Sure, my mom said she loved it, but who really loves macaroni art? She never even put a photo in it. Lee seemed to genuinely like his gift, though, which made me happy. I occasionally had to remind Lee that I wasn't into material things, but he was trying. I asked him to return everything and donate the money to charity. Everything except, okay, the Ferrari was cool. I kept that. Sometime later, when I met up with my friends, I was surprised to find them acting cold and a bit distant. What's wrong? Duh, you left us hanging, Kate. We had to finish the project all by ourselves because you didn't show. It took hours. I'm sorry, I was out on a date with Lee. You know he gave me a traitor. You've changed, Kate. You used to make fun of spoiled rich people. And now you've got the rich boyfriend in the fancy car, just like every other snob. I'm still the same person, and Lee's not like that. I really think you'd like him if you gave him a chance. April clearly disagreed, but I managed to convince her and my other friends to invite Lee to work on our next project so they could get to know each other. Thankfully, it went perfectly. My friends and Lee totally hit it off, and from then on, we all met up often. Okay, that was a lie. But in my defense, the truth made me want to cry. Our big hang sesh started out well enough, but things went downhill fast after Lee, oops, did that. Don't you build model planes? I thought you'd be better at this, Richie Rich. My models come with instructions that tell you where each piece goes. Instructions are for babies. Can't say I'm surprised, Richie Rich. Why do you keep calling me that? That's not my name. Then April flicked some paint in Lee's face. Oops, apologies, your highness. Aw, the spoiled brat's all dirty. Hey guys, who's hungry? Maybe we should take a snack break. No, I think I'm done here. Same. And another time, we were eating at McDonald's when suddenly Lee's stomach started hurting and he ran to the bathroom. I followed him. Yeah, I didn't care, it was the boy's bathroom. And he was throwing up in the bathroom. And just then, April followed me in. Aw, is the richy rich boy not used to eating junk food and all the disgusting stuff that poor people eat? Stop it, April. It's that edible sculpture you gave me. The sneakers that were made from cheese and bread and... Oh, you actually ate that? What is that supposed to mean? I asked you if it's edible, and you said yes. I didn't know you were genuinely asking. I said a sarcastic yes, duh. Are you crazy? Guys, please. And just then, Lee pushed April and left. To make matters worse, the next time I saw April and Lee, separately, of course, they refused to be in the same room now. They each gave me an ultimatum. Your friends are close-minded jerks. Your boyfriend is an entitled idiot. It's me or them. It's us or him. Ugh. All I'd wanted was for my friends and my boyfriend to get along, but everything had blown up in my face. I hadn't felt this low since my mom left. How was I supposed to choose between my friends and my boyfriend? It was like asking me if I wanted to keep my right arm or my left. They were both a part of me. There was only one person who could help me figure this out, my mom. I was sure if I could find her, she would know how to make everything right. But once again, when I asked dad about her, he didn't tell me anything. Instead, he tried to act like her. 
If there's something on your mind, you can talk to me, you know. I need to talk to mom. She's the only person who can help. Your mom's a lot better at running from problems than solving them. Like you're any better? You barely even talked to me before mom left. All you cared about was money. You don't know what you're talking about. No matter how much I begged, my dad refused to tell me where to find my mom. He was probably afraid that if I found out, I'd leave and live with her instead. Things got worse after that. Lee and April called me every day to pressure me to give them an answer. But I wasn't ready to make a choice yet. Unfortunately, that meant my birthday was pretty lonely. Until my dad gave me an envelope from my mom. I was so happy. I opened it as fast as I could. But when I saw what was inside, my world turned upside down. What's this? Dad, who are these other people? <sighs> I guess it's time you finally learned the truth. This is your mom's new family. But what? When? How? Your mom was always obsessed with money. She spent so much money, I had to work two jobs to pay all the bills. She took almost everything when she had left and eventually found a new, richer husband. I was stunned. I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner, honey. Your mom has always been your hero, and I, I didn't want to take that away from you. But you're old enough now to know the truth. And by the way, happy birthday. Is this the frame I gave mom when I was little? Yeah, I always thought it was really special, and it's about time we used it. Dad, I love it. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but there are some people here who I think want to see you. Hey, uh, we wanted to wish you a happy birthday, and also, I want to say something first. I've made my decision. I love you. All of you. And I don't think it's fair that you've asked me to choose, so I won't. You guys don't have to like each other, but you need to respect me. There's room in my life for all of you. That's exactly what we wanted to apologize for. We never should have given you an ultimatum. I think I was just jealous that you had a new boyfriend and you were spending so much time with- And I was jealous of them because they got to grow up with someone as amazing as you and I didn't meet you till we were older. Aw, what? That was sweet. Anyway, we made this for you. All of you? Yep. It's so weird. I love it. 